Hey everybody, welcome back. Now in this video, you are going to get to see me do the old neck bend guitar trick, which I really don't like doing. I, I really don't like doing it, guys. Call me a wuss if you want, but um, I've heard the horror stories. People like Slash doing the neck bend and actually snapping the headstock off. Um, I may have a lot of guitars, but I don't have Slash money, all right? Uh, but anyway, the, the guitar solo that I'm going to play and teach you is definitely one of the most iconic guitar solos to feature a neck bend of all time. And uh, when we get to that section of the solo, if you don't feel comfortable doing the neck bend, if you're like me, um, I'll show you some alternative ways to get through that section that are relatively convincing. I think they sound pretty good. Um, but uh, you'll let me know what you think down below, of course. All right, guys, let's go ahead and jump on into it. With section one, um, let's break it kind of in half. Um, we're going to save the little chord at the end um, with the neck dive. We're going to save that for just a second, but the rest of it goes like this. All right. Um, you should be able to follow the tabs, but I'll explain it anyway. First, you've got an open E note followed by two little uh, string scratches. And then you're going to bend up at the second fret of the E string. You're going to apply a pinch harmonic, right? You should know what that is. Uh, and you're going to bend up one half step, which is like taking it from here to here. Okay? All right? Here's what we have so far. Then the second bend, you do the same half step bend up, and you bring it back down. And then an open E note. All right? Pretty simple, right? Then we get to the neck bend, okay? So it's basically a little E7 chord. And um, what you do is you, you play the chord, and while you're holding it, letting it ring, you're gonna reach over, grab the headstock, and gently pull it this way, okay? Gently pull it this way. Um, what that does is it kind of relieves a little bit of the tension and it causes the pitch to drop, okay? See, I didn't do it very dramatically, just kind of a very light neck bend, the equivalent of, of basically one fret down, like this. And um, that's actually an alternative thing you could do. If you don't feel comfortable doing the neck bend, you could just play the chord like that, bring it down one fret and back up. In fact, one of Joan Jett's more recent guitar players, that's what he does. He doesn't do the neck bend. Instead, he'll just take the chord, bring it down one fret, and then bring it back up like this. Okay, it doesn't quite sound the same, but it's, it's similar enough, right? Um, alternatively, if you've got a whammy bar, right? I, I'm not using a guitar with a whammy bar. I wanted to use my Les Paul just like, you know, they used on the original song. Um, you could use the whammy bar to kind of dip it down and back up, right? That's another, another alternative to doing the neck bend. All right, let's keep moving, guys. All right, section two is going to go like this, and then we'll break this up into some little bite-sized pieces. Okay, so the first box is going to go like this. Now, what I want to call out here is notice that I don't let the notes blend together. Like when I do those 11th fret bends on the G string, and I follow them up with those 12th fret notes on the E and B strings, I don't let it blend. That would sound like this. I mean, that sounds cool, but that's not how you do it, okay? You want to make sure that you don't let them, them blend. And the way to do that is after you do that 11th fret bend on the G, as soon as you hit that 12th fret um, note on the other string, you lift your finger off the G string, okay? And then that the 12th fret note is a quick note. You stop that from ringing pretty quick. You don't let that ring out, okay? All right? All right, the second box is gonna go like this. So what's going on here is first we've got a pre-bend at the 11th fret of the G string. So you bend up the note before you hit it, okay? But at the same time, you're playing the 12th fret of the B string, okay? Okay? And then... 
And then the final box, okay, first three notes are palm muted. And then that final note's kind of like a pinch harmonic, almost a semi-pinch harmonic. It's not like a screaming pinch harmonic, but it's, it is a pinch harmonic on the 12th fret of the B string. Here's the section one more time at normal and then slow speed. Let's keep moving. And then the final section is going to go like this. Now I've broken it out into little boxes because I figure that'll help some people kind of learn it quicker, right? So the first box, followed by, followed by. And then the A chord at the end with the neck bend, okay? <laughs> so that neck bend is the equivalent of one step down. It's like taking the A chord down to G and back up, right? Um, so you are going to have to bend the neck a little bit further on that one, right? Um, but again, if you don't feel comfortable doing that, and uh, you know, you can always use a gu guitar with a whammy bar and just dip it down a full step. All right, everybody, that was my guitar lesson on how to play the solo from the Joan Jett version of I Love Rock and Roll. If you found it helpful or informative, I would appreciate a thumbs up, and please hit that subscribe button if you have not done so already. And if you have any questions or comments, leave them down below, and I will attempt to answer them as time allows. Until next time, rock on.